Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Tony and today I just want to show you how to upgrade a Unify controller that's running on a Synology NAS inside a Docker container. If this is your first time with us, please subscribe and be sure to hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. That being said, let's head over to the computer and get started with today's video. So I was watching a recent Willy How live stream and in the comments, a question came up from one of the viewers asking whether it was better to run a Unify controller in a Docker container on a Synology or on a virtual machine. And with that, Unky Joe from Unky Joe's Playhouse responded and said that he's running one inside of a Docker container on his Synology and he hasn't had any issues. That prompted me to ask Unky Joe if he had any issues with the upgrade process of the controller that's running in that Docker container. And he had said at that point he hadn't upgraded yet, so he couldn't talk about that. But from what he's read, it's a really simple, trivial process. So I wanted to know what the process was like, so I installed a Unify controller on my Synology inside of a Docker container and I ran the upgrade process and it was really simple to do and I wanna share that with you. So I hope you enjoy it. And by the way, if you haven't checked out Unky Joe's channel, please do so. He does some great stuff and I got an opportunity to meet him recently and he's a super nice guy. So this Unify controller is running inside of my Synology in a Docker container. Now I don't have any switches. I didn't adopt anything to the controller, but just to show you, that once we do the upgrade process, everything will be maintained. I did set up a couple of wireless networks, a Docker test Wi-Fi and a guest Wi-Fi. And I also created a user group to throttle down the guest network to five megabits down and two up. So that being said, let's jump over to the Synology. And here you could see the container is running. It's called Unify Docker. It's been up for about two hours. Again, here's just another look, another view of the container, and you can see it's version 5.14. And then here's the image that I used to install that. Now, the key to simplifying this upgrade process is making sure the Unify data folder lives outside of the Docker container. So what I did was under file station on the desktop, you can see here I have the unified data folder here. I just simply created a folder here and I pointed the installation to use this folder, which is in the file structure of the Synology versus being saved inside the container. If you're interested to see how I did that, let me know in the comments below and I'll show you how I did the actual installation. However, getting back to this video, let's get started with the upgrade process. So the first thing we're gonna do is go back to the containers tab and we're gonna take the Docker controller, the 5.14 version, and we're gonna turn it off. And now that it's off, we're just going to select it and under action, we're gonna say delete. And now we don't have a Docker container with Unify running. So basically if I went back and I refresh this page, you can see it says site can't be reached. So I've deleted the Unify controller. However, I haven't deleted all of its data because of that folder that's created inside the file structure of the Synology. So now all we really need to do to do the upgrade process is go to the registry tab. And if you search for Unify, You can see here, Jacob Alberti, he's got different versions of the controller for Docker. And really you can pick any version you want here, but we want the latest and go ahead and download it. Now for the purpose of this video, I already have that image saved here. So we're gonna run that image just by double clicking it. And I'll give this a name. I'll call this Unify Docker. And we're going to go into the advanced tab and we're going to say enable auto restart. There's a couple of things we're going to do in here. We're going to go over to the volume and we're going to add a folder. And this is 
where we're going to add that unified data folder. So it's on the desktop and here it is right here. So we're going to select it and we're going to say select and now it added it. But here we want it to mount into the var dot lib dot unify folder. And then last thing we want to do is under network, we're just going to tell it to use the same network as the Docker host, which is the same network as the Synology. So we'll say apply. And then we'll go ahead and we'll say next. Oh, I got to get the space out of there. Okay, and now it's just confirming everything and then we're gonna tell it to run the container after the wizard is finished. So we'll go ahead and say apply. And now if we go back up to the container tab, we should see that the latest version is running. The container is running up and running. You can see it's running for, the other one said two hours. This one says one minute. So this should be the latest version of Unify. So now let's jump back over to the other tab and let's see if we can reload and see what happens. And there we go. And we have the login screen and you can see here it says version 6.0.28. And now once we log in, we should still see all our data that we had before. And again, remember I didn't have any devices set up, but if we go to the settings and we look at the wireless networks, there are the wireless networks that were set up before. Here's the guest network. Here it should be, we should have the guest user group with the throttling the bandwidth settings. So you see, it's pretty much that simple. It's basically destroying the old container and creating a new container with the newer version. However, the key is the data folder has to be stored in the Synology file structure, not with inside Docker itself. So you may have noticed in the last segment, I updated to the latest version of Synology, which there's been a lot of talk on YouTube and on the internet about the issues and stability problems that it's having. Many of the bigger YouTubers are suggesting that you don't upgrade to it at this point yet. I'm not advocating that you upgrade to version 6.0.28, I just used it as a demonstration to show you in a Synology Docker container situation how simple it is to upgrade from an older version to the latest version. Now, that being said, installing the latest version inside of a Synology Docker container in a non-production environment is a great way to learn the software, figure it out for yourself, become familiar with it, see where they move things around, etc. If you found any value in today's video, please Give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share the video. And thank you guys for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.